In this video, I want to talk about the difference between levels regression and regressions which use first differences. So the idea with a levels regression is that we might be regressing yt on alpha plus beta times xt and we've got some sort of error et which is left over. So that's a levels regression because of the fact that we're using the levels of y and the levels of x. A regression which uses first differences would regress the change in y on the change in x. So the idea here is that the change in y would be equal to some constant delta times the change in xt plus some error ut. So this is a regression which uses the first differences of the variables rather than using the levels of the variables. And note that I haven't specified that the variables yt or xt or any particular type of variable, but normally when we're talking about whether to go with a levels regression or a differences regression, we're talking about variables which are typically non-stationary in level. Okay, so part of the problem and part of the reason I'm doing this video is because these two types of regression are typically thought of by a student of econometrics as one and the same thing. And that same student thinks that the estimate of beta will be the same as the estimate of delta. And it is often thought to be the case that this necessarily implies this. In other words, if we find that there is some sort of relationship in first differences, that it necessarily implies a relationship in levels. That's not necessarily the case. Whilst it is certainly the case that if I have a relationship in or long run relationship in levels, that implies that there will be some sort of stable relationship in first differences, the, f the converse is not necessarily true. To see that the first part of this is true, in other words, if I have a relationship in levels, this implies a relationship in first differences, it's not hard to prove this. Essentially what we do is we take yt minus one from yt, and that's just equal to alpha plus beta times xt plus et. Now substituting in for yt minus one, I've still got an alpha in yt minus one, and then I've got a minus beta times xt minus one plus et minus one. So summarizing this a bit easier, if I get rid of the alphas because I've got those two things cancelling, I've got that the change in yt is equal to beta times the change in xt plus some change in error. And the idea here is that this process looks very, very much like this one which I've stated here. But whilst it's the case that we can go from a levels regression to a first differences regression which is stable, it is not necessarily the case that the converse is true. And the reason behind this essentially is due to this error term here. Because if there is some consistent error between, well, if xt changes and then yt changes by a fixed amount, which is given by delta times the change in x, plus some random quantity ut, it doesn't take long for the effect of these random errors, these ut, to build up and actually to force yt and xt to move in quite different ways and certainly with not a long run constant relationship between them. But I don't expect you to take my word for that. And I have made a MATLAB simulation and I'll provide the code below such that you can prove that this is necessarily the case. So the idea with my simulation is that I am randomly generating some x or some delta x rather and then I'm assuming that there is this relationship between delta y and delta x. And then if I assume the first value of the x series, in other words, the value of x at time one equals zero, and if I assume that the value of y at time one also equals zero, then we can go on to actually rebuild the levels of y and x. But notice that I haven't assumed anything about there being a stable relationship between y and x. All I've assumed is that there is this stable relationship between the change in y and the change in x. Okay, so now running my simulation. On the top here, we have the reconstructed values of the series of x and y. The green line is the x line. The blue line is the y line. 
And you can see that very much they are diverging from one another. They are very much not co-integrated with one another. They are certainly, there is certainly not a long run relationship between Y and X. Even though below, you can see that there is a very stable relationship between the change in Y and the change in X. So this proves that even if we do have a stable relationship in differences, that doesn't necessarily imply a stable relationship in levels. And we have to be very careful in not making that assumption because they are two very different things. And sometimes we want to prove that they're a long run relationship. So sometimes we need to look at the levels of a regression or levels of variables in regression. Whereas sometimes we're not so interested in levels. So we can just use first differences. And the reason I introduce this now is because this is part of the motivation for introducing co-integration. Because if we could assume that these two things were exactly the same, there would be no need to introduce the concept of co-integration because you could always just run regressions, uh, regressions in differences rather. Whereas we know that this isn't the case, so sometimes we need to look for a co-integrating relationship in order to prove that there is actually a long run relationship between two variables.